Stage 3, the longest of the 2014 apps at Cape Epic, led the riders from Robertson to the Overberg village of Grayton, a distance of 134 kilometres. The rivers were swollen and the long undulating district roads made for a high average speed. In keeping with this year's race, there was no shortage of incident. Former stage winner Hannes Genza crashed heavily and had to withdraw due to the severity of his injuries, leaving Mirandal wheeler partner Connie Losa to ride out as an outcast. The curse of the yellow jersey continued. Four-time winner Carl Platt endured a terrible day. His left knee in agony after a heavy fall on stage two, he was nursed home by partner Urs Huber. The Solorent River signaled a change in scenery as they hugged the foothills of the Overberg. And Christoph Sauser and Franciszek Rabon won a three-team sprint into Oka States. Topi Gergen's third place handing them the yellow jersey. Schotter and Bass had their best result of the week. They finished in fourth. A fourth team in yellow, Robert Menon and Christian Heineck. The Riesian women, Kleinatz and Langfart, initially took time out of leader Suss and Bigham as they rode amongst the masters, but once they hit the wind, they handed back almost two minutes to the Mirandal team, who stuck tenaciously to their task of defending the leader's orange jerseys. Kleinatz and Langfart took their third stage of the week. Suss and Bigham lived to ride another day in the orange jerseys. For eight years, Pragma Asset Management have provided an invaluable service to the Apps Cape Epic, by way of washing all the riders' bikes at the end of each stage. Meticulous care is taken of each costly seed using high-quality biodegradable Motorex degreaser and Motorex lube before their return to their grateful owners. Solid and consistent, Topik Ergen and the new leaders will carry a 9 minute and 26 second lead into stage 4. Just 15 seconds separates the Bulls and Mirandal Songo Specialized. The Red Apps African leaders jersey still in the hands of Fed Group by Tech Connect. Mirandal's overall lead in the women's is now 11 minutes and 22 seconds. Cape Brewing Company have over half an hour in hand over the young Mirandal Wheeler pair. Mauritians Lincoln and Holbox hold an 18 minute and 54 second lead over Resia Mixed. The Masters is intense with Brenchens and Azevedo just under 4 minutes behind Entoven and Wilson. McLean and Zorbeck extended their hold on the purple jersey to over 50 minutes. Stage 4 promises a day rich in trail variety. A boost to the network of routes in the Cape Country meander will ensure a constant roller coaster of farm roads, twisty rocky single track, as well as some district road in the middle. A visit to the historic village of Genadendal, the first mission station in South Africa, is a highlight, but riders will be warned there is still plenty of hard climbing to be done. It might be fun, but it definitely won't be easy. The start of Stage 4, the Oaks Estate outside the quaint village of Grayton. A cool morning with scattered clouds make for perfect conditions for mountain biking and the riders will hope the rainy days are behind them. In the middle, the yellow striped jerseys of Topi Gergen, Christian Heineck and Robert Menon, flanked by mixed leaders Team Synergy and Masters leaders Definitive Bikes. The mountains loom over purpose-built single track that lies ahead of the riders, a mountain biker's dream. The riders spent two nights at the Oak Estate. Today the loop caused finishing right back where they start, making the most of the stunning mountain bike terrain around Grayton. The front bunch led out by two-time winner Rule Paulison of Team Topata Factory. The pack is swollen right now at the head of the race with a moderate pace set. When the racing heats up, many of the hangers-on will be shed like a dog's winter coat. The beautiful rolling hills of the Overberg farmland, a playground for mountain bikers and other outdoor enthusiasts. At the head of affairs, controlling the pace is Montoya, not to be confused with the former F1 racing driver. Speaking of motorsport, his partner Ben Bostrom is a former world superbike champion. Philip Bays have Scott Odlow. Two champions lead the peloton towards where the action is going to happen today. The steep single track climb right after water point one. With such a long line of riders behind them, they'll want to be well positioned for the narrow tracks where overtaking is near impossible. In the pink, Hannes Hanekom of True Cape Times. He and his partner Nick Lamond are riding in support of the Pink Lady Cancer Charity. Christian Heineck on the front. We've seen some classy Czech riders at the race, including last year's winner Jaroslav Kulhavi and Sanza's current partner Francis Ekrabon. The pain is too much for big bull Karl Platt. His knee has failed him. He is resigned to the fact that you can't win the Absa Cape Epic on one leg. Uh, <laughs> I'm super disappointed. 
coming here maybe with the the shape of my life ending up that badly yeah that's life huh? I don't know what to think I try to be <laughs> not emotional but <clears throat> that race means a lot for me the prepare I did a lot for the preparation and now like half a year of <clears throat> serious preparation just gone a sad sight to see the full-time winner and top contender limp slowly back to the race village with the race continuing without him his partner Urs Huber will ride alone today continuing at his own pace contemplating what could have been yeah I don't know what to say um, <clears throat> it was our first uh, big goal this season and now we couldn't uh, made it so I don't know Ben Bostrom rides in support of Mirandal Songo specialized an impressive performance and testament to the versatility of this highly talented athlete. Nino Schurter at the front with Philip Bass in close attendance. The lead bike clearing the trails ahead. Bostrom controls the pace at the front, knowing that František Rabon may not have the snap in his legs so early in the day, with experienced mountain bikers out for his blood today. Schurter wants to get cracking. The super vigilant Robert Menon matches his acceleration. Hans Zurve, the cycle lab Toyota, resplendent in his purple zebra striped jersey, leading the Grand Masters category. Ariane Kleinans leads Annika Langfart on the climbs. They lead Sus and Biggin by almost three minutes at this early point in the stage. This spells trouble for Team Mirandol. Sus appears to have mechanical issues. A position on the bike hints at a faulty rear suspension shock. Cherie Stunder having come straight off a win at the cycle tour, contesting the mixed category in the Absa Cape Epic with Theo Bluchnot, a professional triathlete. Today Nino Schurter and Philip Bass have the support of their backup team, Dierkes and Haynes, right up in the lead group. Dierkes on the front, leading the way. Minus the Bulls, all the main contenders are present and correct. Topic, Bulls 2, Scott Odlo, Topada, Mirandal, Mirandal Songo Specialized, BMC, Centurion, RCM, and Multivan Merida. Team Assos Werkmannschaft, Assos is the official supplier of the leaders' jerseys worn here by Wilson and Enthoven in the Masters, and McLean and Zorbech, and Xaro leaders Madola and Simayile. Team RCM, their main aim today is to reclaim the leaders' jerseys. Bostrom on the steep climb out of water point one. Leading the peloton, the bunch snakes its way up. Riders will be using their lowest gears. With the latest technology fitted, many bikes feature the new single front chain ring drivetrain and a wide range of gears at the back. With a gradient today, they'll hope they've got their ratios right. World-famous mountain bike photographer Gary Perkin in his trademark orange beanie at the summit to capture yet another iconic image. Bostrom's skills that have earned him world superbike wins transferring nicely to mountain biking on this tricky technical descent. Centurion Vorda wears the yellow jersey on stage two looking to redeem themselves after terrible luck on stage three with a broken frame. RCM gaining time. Their advantage snowballing with Sousa's mechanical. Langford takes her turn on the flatter sections, all part of team tactics. Bigham leads Sus in pursuit. Sousa's position on the bike is compromised with the malfunctioning rear suspension. Langford and Kleinance arrive at the first water point and shoot straight through. Xara jersey holders, Madola and Simayile, skip the refuel and have enough fluids and food on board to last them to the next stop. Mauritian team Lincoln and Horbachs are greeted in their vernacular by announcer Dan Nickel. 
Bertie from Belgium, back on the water, welcoming alongside the Pascal de Gaulle of our Belgians. Figum and Sus head directly towards the tech zone, hoping they've packed what they need in their official allocated tech boxes. They'll need to continue without having made the highly necessary repairs. Their orange zebra striped leaders' jerseys are in serious jeopardy today. Oh no, another major casualty of the day. Cherie Stunder receives medical attention. It looks like the reigning Cycle Tour champion and Theo Bluchner's race is done. All together up front, the racing is neutralized. The riders take on a mid-morning snack. Attacking now would be just plain bad manners. Schurter tacitly signals that it's time to start racing again. The cross-country world champion lays down the pressure on the climb. Is this the start of something? Schurter and Bass are away. They have a small gap. Mir and Songo specialise and one half of Topi Gergen will try to follow. Heineck is stuck behind after stopping to remove foliage from his drivetrain. This could be the move of the day. Schurter and Bass have flown. The neighbouring town of Konardendal has a rich spiritual history. Founded by George Smith of the Moravian Church, it was the first mission station in Southern Africa. The Moravian Church originated in what is known today as the Czech Republic. However, the top Czech riders, Raban and Heineck, are focused solely on the present. That entails catching Scott Odlo's Schurter and base. Raban and Sauzo with Menon will be looking back to see where his teammate is. Christian Heineck is pushing hard to regain contact with Menon to avoid a two-minute time penalty. Thanks to Sauza's Herculean effort, he and Rabon have closed the gap on Schurter and Bass. Heineck is back in contact. The chase group is led by Raul Polison and contains Bulls 2, BMC and Centurion Voda. Another mechanical. Sauza breaks a chain. The Swiss, cool as an alpine lake, repairs it using a quick link. No easy task with a heaving chest. Support team Reesem are on hand for assistance. Although everything is under control for the Swiss Czech team, this is costing them valuable seconds in their assault on the yellow jersey. The gap between Scott Odlo and the chase group is up to 30 seconds now. Schurter pounding the pedals. Credit to Philip Bass for matching the white hot pace. Flowing single track descent. Nino Schurter, the world champion, shows the rest how it's done. Grayton is a magical jewel in the shadow of the Sondorin mountain range, named after Sir George Grey, the original Leibarter irrigation system still serves its residents. The peace and tranquility can be enjoyed in the numerous charming restaurants and coffee shops. The Grayton Nature Reserve is on the town's doorstep. Mirandal Songo specialized are chasing hard, over a minute back from Yellow Jersey's Topi Gergen. Field art. This Oberberg scene is created by artist Adele Fischer using recycled materials and measures 75 by 50 meters and took 10 days to make. Into the water point, a scene with a festival atmosphere in this sleepy town. No time to join in. The yellow jersey Robert Menon gets out on the road as quickly as possible while his teammate Christian Heineck gives his drivetrain some attention. Dufardo's Chiarini is having a great day out, up there with the chase pack. Christoph Sauza, hungry for that seemingly elusive record-breaking fifth win. Top of the climb, Schurter pauses momentarily for base, knowing how important it is for him to stay in contact on the descent. Piling on the pressure is Team Topi Gergon, knowing that Mirandal Songo specialized are on the back foot. Saz and Rabon are shattered by Ben Bostrom, who's riding in support of the Swiss Czech pair.
In the women's race, Team Reese M have neutralized Mirandal's 11 minute 22 second overall GC advantage. Compromised by mechanical Sus and Bigham are doing all they can to limit the damage. Scott Odlo riding their new 27 and a half inch wheel bikes, a new wheel size, more maneuverable than the more popular 29 inch variety. Former road cyclist Riccardo Chiarini is holding his own on the descent. He too is riding a 27 and a half inch bike. The cool Robert Menon holding up well under the pressure of the yellow jersey. Sauze is controlling the damage. Mirandal Songo Specialized looked likely to lose more time to the yellow jerseys. Scott Odlo, a blinder of a day for them. The chase group approach Lismore Estate, makers of handcrafted wines. Schurter and Bass are already smiling into the final kilometer. Surprisingly, this will be their first ever stage win for both of them at the Absa Cape Epic. Centurion Voda exit the last section of single track, looking set for another second place. Topi Gergen consolidate, a successful day in yellow, perhaps breaking the curse of the leader's jersey. Charging into the finish, celebrations for the Scott Odlo pair. Base and Schurter take stage four. Centurion Voda, ever consistent. How things would have been so different had they not have had such a disaster two days ago. Cool and composed, and third on the day, keeping yellow Robert Menon and Christian Heineck. A big moment for Schurter and Bass, the Swiss-South African pair onto the top step of the podium for the first time. Two days in yellow, Heineck and Menon. The Riesian pair of Kleinans and Langford again making every second count in their pursuit of the orange jersey. A troubled day for Esther Seuss and Sally Bigham. They take second place. All smiles on the top step of the podium for Team Riesian, back in orange. Yeah, for me it's uh, it's a great victory. Uh, it's something different. It's so uh, it's nice to have a, a victory like this as well in the in the Palmers. And so the next thing would be to win the overall. So <laughs> maybe have to come another year again. <laughs> Yeah, we I sort of still struggled a bit on the climbs today, but uh, I think our bikes were perfect uh, for today's stage, and we managed to, uh, you know, increase our gap on each downhill and uh, yeah, just maintain it up the climbs. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really special winning this stage with Nina. Oh yeah, it, it's um, frustrating when you get mechanical problems, but that's part of the race. So um, yeah, it's frustrating, but I. I think we, we both enjoyed, well, <laughs> to some extent we enjoyed the stage and the trails were really nice. Um, but yeah, it's disappointing to lose the leader jersey, but there's still three more days to go. So um, we'll see what we can do over the next three days. The race isn't over until we cross the finish line in Lawrenceburg. We knew that there was a, it was possible to, to get back the jerseys, <clears throat> just like staying consistent and taking a minute, some minutes every day. But today we took like a huge amount of minutes, so that was good. Earlier than expected, but it, of course, it just takes the pressure off a little bit, so we can just continue doing what we do, like ride our race. And yeah, today we, we felt very good. It was really good because actually we, <laughs> the teamwork is, is working very well. Um, it's, it's like we, we don't have to speak that much anymore because we know exactly when one of us has to be in the front, like we shift like at certain points, depending on the on the riding and the trails, and it went like perfectly. So we couldn't have gone faster. I don't think so because we did our best and it worked very well. 
a superb skilled ride by the Scott Odlo pair. Scherzer and Bass both winning a first stage. Centurion Voda continued to impress and Topik Ergen consistent as ever. Scott Factory pair of Haynes and Bierkes, first South Africans home. Topik Ergen extend their lead to 11 minutes and 47 seconds. Haynes and Bierkes of Scott Factory racing the new wearers of the Abs African jerseys. Fed Group iTech Connect penalised for an hour for a route violation. Rhysium, Kleinans and Langfart won for the fourth time this week. Mirandar lost valuable time due to their mechanicals. Kleinans and Langfart of Rhysium back in the orange jerseys for the first time since stage one. Their advantage just a minute and 11 seconds. Orly Holbach's and Yannick Lincoln won their third stage of the race. A great ride by Brenchens and Azevedo saw them take the Masters. A late puncture couldn't stop Cyclab Toyota from winning a fifth. The withdrawal of Stunder and Bluchlot has elevated Trek Israel to second in the mix. Brenchens and Azevedo are the new leaders in the Masters and Bucher and Brown are 57 minutes behind McLean and Zorbech. For the first time at the Absa Cape Epic, friends and family are able to keep tabs on the riders through the official race website via Tracker, who provide each rider with a tracking unit, which they carry with them throughout the ride. At the end of the day, riders can clean off the dust and grime in one of the four shower trailers provided. Each has 16 shower units, making a total of 40 showers with a highly water-efficient Hunsgrohe showerhead. The Queen's Stage, Stage 5, arguably the hardest of this year's race. Wise riders should conserve energy for the first 50 kilometres where Serengeti is the warm-up to the big brother Rusty Gate climb. The highest point in this year's race at 5Ks and an average gradient of 10%, tired legs will suffer. After water point 3, they'll hit the epic monument Grunlandberg, a long slow grind with spectacular views. The drop into Oak Valley Wine Estate is a rewarding finish to a truly epic day.